Okay, I'm going to go through how to calculate the mechanical advantage of this compound machine to help you understand what's going on. So first we have, uh, we can treat this as a wheel and axle. So when this crank turns, uh, we are turning the little tiny axle here. So our force is being applied at the handle and the force is transferred to the outer edge of that eighth inch diameter axle right there. And then that force is transmitted from that axle to this sprocket, which transmit that, that force through the chain to the outside of this sprocket, which then transmits that force to this axle. And then from that axle to this small gear, and then the gear tooth to gear tooth, and gear tooth to gear tooth, and then gear tooth transmits that force to this axle. And then if we go to the back side of the machine, it transmits from this axle to this pulley, from the pulley to the belt, the belt down to this pulley. This pulley then turns this axle, and this axle force then is transmitted out to this lever arm here where we can hang a weight and raise up a weight with that lever arm. So just to kind of show you what it looks like from the top uh, as it's turning, so you turn the handle and you can see those items moving and you can see the pulley moving and the lever arm back here turns as a result. Okay, so how are we going to treat this and how are we going to set this up in terms of mechanical advantage? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is, okay, so let's start with mechanism one. We're going to treat this as a wheel and axle where this distance is our wheel and the distance from the point to the outer point is the axle. So, let me get my camera set up here so you can see uh, what I'm writing. So, IAMA1 is distance effort over distance resistance. So this is going to be 2 pi times the radius of the wheel over 2 pi times the radius of the axle. Now the, real, the wheel radius, um, again if we look at our design, um, is still going to, is going to be 2 inches. I measured from here to here, so it's 2.00 inches. So let's put that down. Um, the two pies cancel here, so two pi are gone, so the radius of the wheel is 2.00 inches, and the radius of the axle is one half the diameter, so it'd be 1 16th of an inch. So that value comes out to be 32 uh, for the IMA of the first one. Now, if you just trust me on this for right now, I'll do another video on it, the explanation, but anytime I go from axle to axle, I can use the sprocket ratio or a gear ratio equal to the mechanical advantage. So, let's do that for this next one. Okay, so here's our sprocket ratio for um, this design right here. So the output uh, teeth is 24 and the input teeth on that is 16. So on my calculation here I have um, teeth out over teeth in, so 24 over 16. And if I do that in my calculator, I get a 1.5 for my IMA for that particular part. Now I'm going to look at the gear train. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go from axle to axle. So right now my force is on this axle. Uh, and that particular uh, gear has 12 teeth. And then I can go to this axle, and that has 36. And then I can go from this axle, which is 36, to this axle, which is 60. So that's what I'm going to do there. So again, for a simple gear train, the gear ratio is equal to, um, in this case, I've got A, B, and C, if I were to draw a picture like this, where this is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay, so I'm going to go N of B over N of A, 
times N of C over N of B. And I could simplify this. I could go straight from A to C uh, because B is just an idler. But I'll show this just so you can see the entire thing. So I have 36 teeth over 12 teeth and then 60 teeth over 36 teeth. If you notice, the 36 is cancel. That's why you can skip it. So this is now a 5 to 1 ratio. So that's our gear train. That's our third setup. Now we have basically the force that's being applied at that axle. So now when we look to the other side, I'm going to go from this axle to this wheel diameter here. So I've got a, a wheel and axle, but the force now is on the axle and I'm turning the wheel. Okay? So I'm going to do that calculation. So this is um, an axle back to a wheel. So the IMA is equal to the diameter of effort over diameter of resistance. In this case, it's 2 pi r times the axle. So radius of axle. And then 2 pi radius of wheel. Radius of my axle is 1 16th of an inch. And the radius of the wheel um, is it's 3 fourths is the diameter. So that would be 3 eighths for that particular pulley. So when I do this in my calculator, I get a 0 0.166 for the mechanical advantage of that axle to wheel. And again, it should be less than 1. Now, um, actually I didn't have to do that. I'm sorry, I didn't have to do that. So I'm on this axle and I'm going to go to a force down on this axle and I could just use the ratio of diameters between these two. So I'm going to scratch that out. Um, so this one is actually not necessary. Okay, so I'm going to do the uh, pulley um, and belt system. So the IMA of that is just the ratio of the diameters. So diameter out over diameter in. So the out diameter is 3 inches. And the input diameter is 3 quarters of an inch. So the IMA of that is 4 to 1. And then now I actually have the force on this final I'm going to turn this around for us. Okay, so now I've gone the force from this axle here down to the force of this axle here. And now I'm going to go from axle to where I'm going to hang the weight, which is out in the middle of this um, setup. So how am I going to find that? Well, this is back to an, uh, you could use this as a third class lever where the effort is way up here on the edge of this axle and the resistance is going to be way out here uh, or you could treat it as an axle back to a wheel if you were treating it spinning in 360 but I'm going to do a lever okay third class lever from there to there so my pivot is right in the middle here so my distance to my effort is half of that um, which is 1 16th and then my distance is going to be from the middle of this to the middle of this. And since these are half inch squares, that's a half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half inches to the middle where the weight would be hanging off of there. So let's show that calculation. So this is a third class lever. So IMA is equal to the distance effort over distance resistance. We said that's 1 16th of an inch. It's half the axle uh, width. And then we said that's 2 and a half inches to my resistance. That's a 0.025. And again, that should be very small. Um, because of where the forces are located, 
Uh, but again, we've got very large mechanical advantages up above. We had a 32 way up here. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to find the total now. So IMA total is equal to IMA1 times IMA2 times IMA3 times IMA4 times IMA5. So let's plug it in. IMA1 was 32.0, IMA2 is 1.5, IMA3 is 5, IMA4 is 4, and IMA5 is 0 0.025. And again, I just got those numbers right from my calculations. Again, this one is a mess up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And when I take the overall calculation of this, So I get a total IMA equal to 24. Alright, thanks for watching. That's how you calculate an IMA from a compound machine.